Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to use the transform tool in Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Transform. 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 <laughs> That's my abstract transforming. So essentially, the transform tool can be used on all sorts of layers, objects, shapes, text layers, all sorts of things you can basically transform it, meaning moving its angles, its dimensions. That's essentially what you're going to do. But it's more than just resizing. There's actually a lot of things that you can do with it. So I'm going to walk you through how to do all those things. Then at the end, I've got a little tiny project to show you something that you can do that's quite clever with it. OK, let's jump into Photoshop. So this is part of my Photoshop series. If you want the rest of it, head over to photosincolor.com. So this is a photograph we're going to use today. The transform tool is quite basic to find it anyway. If you're in the move, move tool, you're basically already inside the transform tool. But if you're ever not inside that and you're somewhere else completely, all you have to do is have a layer selected and go Command T. And that's what's going to put you in there. That's how you get to the transform tool, Command T. OK, so what can you do? Well, you have a number of handles, which are these little pointers here. You grab one from the top and then you can move it up and down basically stretching the pixels and changing its size. Command Z to undo that. The corner allows you to do both up and down and left and right, which is great. And then the side is just side to side. And then obviously the bottom and the other side is the same. Now, sometimes you want to scale something but keep its proportion. So hold down Shift and then pull it. And then no matter where my mouse or pointer, my cursor goes, it will always stay in the same proportions. So you're going to use that one a lot. And that is basically holding down shift. Hit return, and it's going to apply that change. So Command T again. Now, if you hold down Option and Shift, what that will do is that will then resize, keep it scaled, but around the central point. OK, so that goes like this. Now, let's look at something slightly more advanced. Command T, I said around the central point, but you can move this point, for example, up here. And now um, Option Shift or Alt Shift and do it. It's going to do it around that point up there. And again, you can then move this even outside of it. And then when you do it, it's going to do it like so. So this point is really, really great. Now, if you ever want to reset this, you can just click in the top here. The center point is the center. And then you have all of your corners, which you can use as well. OK, so what are these other options up here? Well, essentially, this is just the location of the image. So you've got your x axis, which is your left and right. Um, then you have, let me go Command T into this, y axis, which is up and down. Essentially, you're just going to move the image. And then you have your W, which is width, and H, which is height. So you can actually, if you know what you want it to be, you can actually type in, OK, I want to increase the size by that. If you click this link button here, I can go, I want to decrease the size, so I want to make it 80%. And it's going to keep the same formation and make it 80%. So that can be really helpful. Now, the next one here, you can drag this. And this essentially is the rotation in degrees. So if we reset this, to reset, you just hit Escape and then Command T to go back into it. If I wanted to rotate it 90 degrees, hit 90, and it does it automatically for me. OK? Now, there's another way of doing that as well. If you're holding on to it, you move it around. But if you're on just on the outside, it then brings up the Rotate option. And this is completely a free rotation. You can just spin it around, again, that center point. But if you want to keep it locked in, you hold down Shift, and then it's going to do it in 15 degree increments. So it will go, you know, 0, 15, 35, 45 degrees. Then it goes 60, 75, 90 degrees, all the way around. So that means that you can keep it centralized. Now, I can move this over here, and when I rotate, it will now be around that point. So again, you can choose really the way that this works. So again, it really is more powerful than just resizing something. 
Now, your other options that you have over here is this, if you select this, this is your warp tool and essentially it's split into squares and you can manipulate the image in literally any direction you choose. Now there's also handles within this. So you can actually manipulate, see if you see these handles, I'm moving that square around just by using the handles. So that's sometimes helpful as well when you're trying to say, wrap this around a can, for example. But the other things here is basically once you've reset it, you have don't accept or accept. Now the other way is escape is don't accept and return or enter is accept. So pretty good so far, but wait, there's more. <laughs> there's a lot more to this. Essentially, if I right click on this, it now brings up all of these other options. So let's quickly go through this. Scale is what it is on naturally. So we don't need to worry about that. Rotate is the rotation, which we already know. And, but now we have some other options. Skew. So what that allows me to do only on one axis at a time, I can, you see, stretch this point and it leaves all of the other points where they are. And I can go down. So if you watch, it's only ever doing one axis at a time. That's the up and down axis and that's the left and right. And then you can go in and out, up and down like so. Now, another one, the next one down, okay, that was skew is distort. Now what this does is all of the axes. So you see, as I'm pulling that in, it's doing it kind of the up and down and the left and right. So X and Y axis at the same time. So you can see it's creating all of these things, which is quite amazing when you actually put it into practice. Because let me show you the next one is perspective. So this happens around the mi middle point. So watch when I pull this in. It's going to go around that middle point. Or it's going to go around that middle point. Now you can imagine now, oh, this looks like it's on somebody's wall. Now what you can also do with this is you can change, hold the middle point and move it up and down so that you can change things there. And we'll get into what that is in, in a second, but essentially that's just perspective. Massively powerful. Then there's warp, which is exactly what that other selection is up there. So essentially you could put it on something round, so that's really powerful. And the final options that you have down here or you have rotate, so this will set certain amounts for it to rotate, um, like 90 degrees. So that's a nice little thing there. And then you've also got flip. So you can flip it vertically, or you could flip, flip it horizontally. So that's all of those tools there, massively, massively powerful. So you can use this in so many ways on all sorts of things. For example, inside text. Okay, I can write some text. Okay, I'm gonna write test just there. And now, Command T, I get all of the same options that I had a second ago that I can do on my text. Now, the great thing about the text layer is once I hit return, I can now go in and change this to my name. And it's gonna keep all of those settings, which is, again, massively, massively powerful. Now, you'll see that there are some things missing Okay, the perspective and things. If you wanna to get to those with text, you must first right click down here um, and you must then rasticize, ras sorry, rasterize type. And now what you can do is now you have all of those functions. But now what you can't do is alter that text. Okay, so now we've figured out what all of these things is, I would definitely recommend going away and having a play, have a look at it, see what it does. But now we're gonna do a little project. We have this photograph here, and if you, if, you've, um, if you have my Photoshop course, then you'll have this image that you can practice along with me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this cover, and we're gonna put this girl in there, which is amazing. So first of all, let's cut this out. We're just gonna use the polygon tool. Now I'm not gonna do this particularly very accurately. You can do it more accurately yourself. And we're literally gonna cut this out like so and do that. And then all we're gonna do, let's refine the edge of this, and I'm gonna add a little bit of feathering to this because I know that that image isn't completely you know, sharp. So just a little bit of a feathering, hit OK, and then let's mask that. Now it's mask the middle section, so Command I will invert that. Great, so now we have that blank. So let's bring in this image, 
Let's go back to the move tool, pick it up and drop it just here. Now you can put any of your, Im your own images in there and let's move this layer to underneath. Great. So this is good, but you can see by the boundaries of this that it's completely not the right angle or anything that this was taken at. So this is where we can change it. So we go Command T and let's, first of all, we need to put it into some perspective because it's not correct. So let's bring in the size first. So we'll keep it in the center, shift, option. In fact, let's line up with the corner. So we'll go like this and then we'll bring this in here. Command zero will let me see all of it. And then shift, option here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna do it around that end point. So I know that by doing it here, that's gonna kind of fit in. But that's not perfect as we can see. So let's go back in here and now let's go for perspective. Okay, so we need to change these angles. So this angle needs to line up with the bottom angle. So let's move it up. That works pretty well. But the problem is this angle doesn't work. So now let's move it over here. So now that angle works. But then the problem is this top angle doesn't work. So now we can bring in this angle but now this bottom angle doesn't work. So we can see we're kind of going around in circles. So instead what we can do is we can use a few different ones. We'll start off with perspective because we want to actually put this into perspective. So we're gonna go like so, and we're gonna bring in the bottom. So we're gonna move it across like so. But then we've got an issue with this side. So all we're gonna do to fix that is we're gonna go to skew and we're gonna bring in this top one, like so, and bring in this bottom one. And now what you can see is we've actually fit this image perfectly, and now she is completely to scale. Hit return, and then we can put it in, and now she looks like she's actually on that record, which for me is really exciting. Now it's not perfect, so let's do a couple of manipulations on this to fix it. Now I think this image is quite washed out, so let's add an adjustment layer, and let's pull down the contrast. Okay, that's helped to put it in. Let's zoom all the way in. Now we can also see this isn't completely sharp. So we're gonna go layer, filter, blur, and we're gonna add a Gaussian blur to this. And now we're not gonna blur it out completely. But we're just gonna try and match the image. So we're just gonna add just a little bit of a blur to that. There we go, starting to fit in. And now to help the whole thing, we're gonna to tone the entire image together. So now above this, we're gonna add an adjustment layer and we're gonna add a photo filter. And let's make that a little bit stronger. And now that to me, starting to look pretty good, I think. And what I like to do in these situations to really pull it together is I'm gonna to flatten those. Command Shift E is gonna flatten all of those layers. And I'm gonna go filter, camera raw filter, it's gonna load this up into Camera Raw, and then what I'm able to do inside Effects is I'm gonna add a little bit of grain, okay? And now when we actually zoom into this, we can see that the grain goes over the entire image and really makes this fit together. You can see that this now completely blends beautifully together. Hit OK. We've added quite a lot there, but now, we have this image that looks like our own record label cover, whatever you call that, an LP cover. So that there is how to use the transform tool. It's more than just scaling things. So definitely hit Command T and have a little practice and also work on an image like this and see if you can get the perspectives right and make an image fit in. Anyway, if you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to this channel because I've got loads more um, tutorials coming in the future. Ah, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune.